We say a system with input xn and the output yn is causal if y depends only on xn in past samples of xn, but not on xn plus 1, xn plus 2, these future samples of x. For example, would this be a causal system? Yn is xn plus n, xn minus 1. Yes, because it only depends on the past sample and also x and also and xn. So this is indeed causal. How about another example? Yn is equal to xn plus 1. Would this be causal? No, it's not causal because it depends on future sample of x. This is not causal. Remember, we say that an LTN system is totally determined from the impulse response. So now, is it possible to determine whether the system is causal or not from the impulse response? The output is determined by the convolution. So let's look at each sample of y to see whether it depends on future samples of x. Let me write down yn0, which is equal to this sum, substitute n0 here. Let's split it into two terms. It has a lot of, they depend on a lot of xk, right? So let's depend, split it into two terms. One that depends on past samples up to the current samples of x. One that depends on future samples. So this is the term that depends on the future sample. Let's call this one. And the system will be causal if and only if one is equal to zero. So let's write down one to see what it's like. When k is equal to n0 plus 1, we have xn0 plus 1 and then h minus 1. When k is equal to n0 plus 2, the argument in h is minus 2. And then continue like this. So now we can see that the system is causal, the LTI system is causal, if all these h coefficients are equal to 0. And only if h minus 1 equal to h minus 2 are equal to 0. That is, hn is 0 for all n smaller than 0. We can also look at what we have just derived pictorially. First, yn0 is computed this way. This is a function of k. And this is also a function of k. This is also a function of k. We multiply these two functions of k together and then sum it up. So, for example, this is sk and uh, this is hn0k. To obtain hn0k, we first flip it and then shift it so that the samples the h0 samples will come to n0 because we flip it. So this is hn1, h1, this is h2, h3. And on the other side, this will be h minus 1, h minus 2. And we are going to multiply these two sequences together. And as we can see here, these are the future samples of x. And these future samples will be multiplied by these samples of h. So if all the samples of h before n before 0 are all equal to 0, then the results will come out. The samples of x, the future samples of x, will come out into the summation. We say a system is stable if every bounded input produces a bounded output. That means whenever the 
should I value the legs so as not to be cast in anyone? Imply, this implies the absolute value y is the sort of the true that cast it into. This is very much like the definition of stability for the continuous time case. And we also call this stability bounded input, bounded output stability. For example, this is m1, and this is minus m1, then xn would only be would only be in this range. I have drawn it like a continuous curve, but uh, uh, it's actually a discrete time. And y m2 and minus m2, then y will only in this range. We know if it's LTI, we can determine everything from its impulse response. How can we determine whether it's stable or not? Recall that if it's a continuous time case, let's recall the continuous time case here. Continuous time case. We can also determine the stability from its impulse response. And in that case, it's whether if this is true. Now let's look at the discrete time case. Suppose x is bounded by a moment. And the output is the convolution of x and h. And uh, we want to look at the absolute value of y. We want to look at the absolute value of y, so let's do absolute value on both sides. This is less or equal to the sum of absolute value. x is bounded. We know x is bounded. This is less or equal to m1. So this is less or equal to m1. And then the absolute sum of h. So now we can see that y will be bounded if this term is bounded. So now we can say if the absolute sum h is bounded, then the LTI is stable. Let's look at some example and see whether or not the system is stable. For example, the rectangular window that we have seen before, HN is like this, will this be stable? Yes, indeed, it is stable because it has only finite good many terms, so it's absolutely sum. Another example, the one-sided exponential sequence, hn is an and n. Will this be absolutely simple? Yes, indeed. Because a is between 0 and 1, so when we sum up the sequence, it will be. When hn is the Unit step sequence, this is not bounded, so this is not a stable system. Just now we say when h is absolutely summable, then the LTI system is stable. How about the converse? When the LTI system when the LTI system is stable, does it imply that this is true? This is the same as asking this question. Suppose this is not bounded. Is the LTS system not stable? What does it mean when the LTS system is not stable? And the stability, the BI, the bounded input, bounded output sense stability. If it is not stable, that means that we can find a bounded sequence that produces an unbounded output. There exists a bounded sequence that produces an unbounded output. In this case, the LTI system is not stable. Let's see if we can come up with a sequence, a bounded sequence, that will produce an unbounded output when H is not absolutely summable. Suppose H is not absolutely summable. And uh, let's consider this bounded input. It's sometimes it's 1, sometimes it's minus 1. When is it equal to 1? h is not bounded. hn is equal to the sign of h minus n. It's equal to 1 if this is positive. 
and it's minus one if this term is negative. So if we look at the value of y at zero, this convolution sum becomes this. And because xk is the sign of h minus k, so this becomes the sum, the summation like this. And it's not bounded because h is not bounded. The absolute value of h, the sum of absolute value of h is not bounded. Combining the two results that we have just found, we can say that an LTI system with impulse response H is stable if and only if it's absolutely summable. Absolutely summable.